Hello, today we are going to talk about toxoplasmosis. So what on earth is toxoplasmosis? Glad you should ask. Toxoplasmosis is an infection acquired by a protozoa called Toxoplasma gondii. It is mainly acquired through food and is actually one of the leading cause of death from foodborne illness in the United States. Can you believe that? How does this affect the mother and her fetus? In addition to the usual effects it has on adults, this can cause neurological effects on the fetus because the protozoan travels through the placenta. This can be monitored through the amniotic fluid. Fortunately, the mother cannot give it to the baby after birth, even through breast milk. How does someone obtain this bug? Well, let me tell you. One is through eating raw fish. Another is through eating undercooked or raw meat. A third is through doing outdoor activities that could expose the mother to, let's say, animal feces. For animal feces can actually carry the disease. As we see here, a mother is gardening and potentially exposing herself to the parasite. This is where cats come into play. Cats. Although not the leading vector of this disease, they can spread the protozoan in a very simple form. That's right, they're feces. When a mother is cleaning a litter box and exposing herself to cat feces and does not properly utilize hand washing techniques and other hygienic measures, she is unfortunately putting herself and her fetus at risk. As we can see in this layout, the disease can be spread through cat feces and also can be spread through other animals. This is why we must be very mindful when eating undercooked or raw foods. Pregnant and immunocompromised patients may experience flu-like symptoms, although symptoms are not common. It is very important to identify exposure within three weeks and no later than eight weeks in order to have the best outcome. If exposure is suspected, it is very important to begin drug therapy. If the mother is less than or equal to 18 weeks pregnant, she's put onto spiromycin, an antibiotic. It concentrates more on the placenta and in the maternal serum and less on the fetus. It should continue until the mother is at least 18 weeks, and amniocentesis, PCR, and finally diagnosis of the infection is determined. If the fetus is not infected, then we continue with spiromycin. If the fetus is, then if it's past 18 weeks, we can change the therapy. The mother will put on pyrimethamine with sulfadiazine with folinic acid. Unfortunately, it's teratogenic but less harmful after 18 weeks. Amniocentesis, PCR, and diagnosis obviously occur, but you must keep a CBC because thrombocytopenia, anemia, and leukopenia can occur. Remember, always eat fully cooked meat. Try freezing your meat because freezing the protozoan kills it. Only drink pasteurized, not unpasteurized milk. And if you're doing outdoor activities or washing dishes, use your gloves. Try having somebody else change the litter box for you. Always wash your fruits and vegetables, but the best way to keep the protozoan at bay is washing your hands.